We were having some lovely spring weather. You can hear it on the roof. Um, <clears throat> so I've stripped off a load of the ancillary stuff, like the gear knobs and mount brackets and slave cylinder and whatever. Next job is to reduce, remove this plate so I can then get to the three fixings which are inside there, which hold that part of the transfer box onto the main gearbox. Um, everything's covered in about half an inch of very oily clay mud. So yeah, it's not fun. And uh, as I flipped it over, a load of water's run out of the uh, overdrive. So that's going to be entertaining in that. Well, well, I've literally just broke the seal. Um, it was stuck down pretty hard. It's moving now. There we go. I mean, I was expecting worse. We'll have to see how the bearings look if they've been stood wet. And obviously everything's going to be splashed with oil because I've just rolled it round. Anyway, the next thing off is the uh, overdrive, I believe. Take that off, then I can get to this shaft end here. Take the tab off, knock the shaft out. And then that comes out, the intermediate. Once the intermediate's out, I can get to that bolt, the uh, nut, and that one there. Or at least I hope I can. So that's what everybody says you can do. Anyway. Once we've got this section off, then I can actually have a look at the gearbox and see what the hell's going on with that. So I'm just pulling off the uh, fairy overdrive. Um, you can see how it's, as it pulls, that's got to rotate a little bit, which it's doing. It's quite a snug fit in there. And then there's everybody's favorite feature, the stud that comes unloose because the nut hasn't got enough clearance to come off the end of the stud. stud. I've managed to get that one off. And this one's just winding out slowly. Gotta love an engineering design. Muppets. Cup of tea time. I've got to somehow move, get this shaft to come out. I think it was a pry bar under there and they'll leave it back. But guess what I haven't got. So I'm gonna have a cup of tea and then root about in the workshop, see if I can find a small pry bar. Um, looking at uh, Don't know what how tight that's supposed to be, but got to assume it would be more snug than that. Maybe I'm wrong, don't know. I mean, it's got a slide, so I guess there's clearances, but that looks excessive. No end play on that. And uh, that's the main input shaft. And the needle roller bearing sits inside the end of the uh, Overdrive unit. We'll have a look at all the units when we get them on the bench and start going through each individually. But at the moment, I want to have a cup of tea. Well, that's why it's gone reasonably well. Found me long, long pry bar, which I picked up in a forest when I was um, chopping timber about five years ago. Anyway, so that slides out, intermediate gear comes out, and on the end of each, on the end of the shaft, there's a couple of thrust bearings or thrust washers to put back on. So we know there's no end play, and uh, that's about it really. And then there's three nuts which go on studs. Two of the studs are pulled out, uh, or unscrewed I should say, and one's left in. So that now, I should be able to pull the gearbox off. Um, and I believe that lock can stay on it. We'll know in a minute. So that's the top plate off. Um, I can't remember which way round these come out. I did, I've just seen it on one video and memory like goldfish at the minute. So I've got to take these out and then uh, we'll see what we can see. But uh, I think ultimately the whole thing's got to come apart anyway. Well, there's obviously quite a bit of rusty crap going on. I mean, it's obviously had water in it and it's sweated. We'll take this assembly off as well, which is the bit for the reverse bloody convoluted thing. You know, it's, it, I think it's in neutral at the moment because I can pretty much, yeah, so it's in neutral at the moment. Don't know whether that helps. 
Well, I've wiggled the bell housing off. So, I've got to read the next bit, but uh, when you get it that size, which is my hand, it's not very big, is it? Four speed box. Um, consensus seems to be the crap that I found in it, which was metal, is, is the ends of one of these. It's either this end or the other end. Um, should be intrigued to see. Anyway, I uh, need to have a bit of a reshuffle and give myself some more bench space on account of uh, filling up fairly rapid. But yeah, so far so good. Well, cleaning this gearbox off is soul destroying. I've had another two hours and I've split the, got the shaft out of the uh, bell housing to the input shaft. I've given a quick clean up on the outside uh, of the transfer box. Um, I'm not going to split that yet, I'm going to do that later. Uh, I've got enough bits hanging about. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, as it stands at the moment, there's um, but the main of the problems are the reverse gear on the main gearbox. The rest of it's just seals and probably bearings. So yeah. Well, it's Easter Sunday. What better way to spend the day than stripping down a ferry overdrive? So I took this off and stuck it to one side, um, leaning basically as it was, and then watched water dribble out the uh, inspection plate. So I don't know what sort of uh, horrors I was going to find. That's the main drive for it that comes out of the end of the, uh, the gearbox. Um, and that's in pretty good nick. What apparently happens is these little teeth get worn to buggery. But they're not bad. So, looking down the spout, you can see the corresponding splines and they look basically all right. Now, the inside is driven, yeah? And then through the complex series of gearing inside, which is basically three gears, the outside is driven. So if you watch, the outside moves at a different speed between there and there. It's not easy to show on the camera. But what I have noticed is there's bits of crap coming out between those interfaces. So the water's got in there and probably flooded the grease or oil that was in that oil, I guess. So I want to take it down, clean it all apart. It's smooth so we took out the dipstick and that showed that there were no oil in it <laughs> took the inspection panel off and went yes there is oil in it drained it off and i've took about a pint of water out and a pint of oil so actually the oil level weren't too bad looking inside i'm just gonna prop it up and come back Well, I've just removed that locking nut which locks the gear shift onto the uh, moving member there. And I think it's that shaft that is the issue. It's seized it along here. I'm not sure if the end of that is a cap, which looks a bit crusty, or if that's actually the shaft end. Um, I'll have to have a bugger about. Anyway, with it off, you just have that sliding. So that's now not in overdrive so that the input drives at the same speed and it don't want to move now <laughs> oh. right well I'll have to have a bit of a play but I think that's basically the problem everything's a bit stiff because it's crudded up so bring you back when we've found out a bit more that's the one that's come out of the gearbox which has got chunks missing around here yeah that's the new genuine part made in the uk 
definitely not been machined as nicely. See the leading on these spline teeth? Nothing on those. Chamfer on the outside there. Nothing on those. It's uh, rock solid, so I can't tell you how it uh, moves. It's, I think it's just gummed up with dried old grease. I mean, it's for Series 3, so it's uh, possibly quite old stock. But yeah, I mean, teeth are nicely, blank, not nicely made. I'm going to give it a scrub of WD-40 and then uh, have a look after me butty. Just started to rebuild the uh, Series 3 gear gearbox. Uh, main shaft in the vise, setting the end float, got that one on. Next bit is a distance piece, sits on there. And then the gear slides over the top. And then you basically check how much end float there is, according to the book. And uh, basically there's none. And through a, quite a bit of investigation, this is the original gear and the distance between that shoulder and the one on the underside, 1.217 thou. That one, 1.227 thou. Those of you that are quick at maths will have calculated that's 10 thou difference. That's the distance piece. That measures exactly the same as the one that came out, one and a 1.225. So that's two thou too long. But then to get any end clearance, it needs another couple of thou. So it's somewhere between five and 10 thou too big. We're now waiting. One of the wonders of Land Rover engineering. Series three gearbox suffix B D God knows. Lost losing track right in there. There's a groove. That spring clip has to fit into it. I've checked all my dot all my tolerances, my measurements, got all the running clearances it needs. All I've got to do now is put that over the top. What a pain in the arse. Um destroyed the old one when I took it apart. Um, you're supposed to replace them anyway. So yeah, it's the right finger chewer, and I've bought uh, bought a selection just in case. So I'm going to go and try and make a tool do it with. Well, that worked all right. Got a plug on the end. If anything, I could have given it a bit more clearance on that face, so that when it sits, it just goes down to the end of this shoulder. And then, uh, I think it's a one and a half or two degree taper. So that diameter's the ID of the clip. That diameter's the OD of that shaft. And then it's just blend the two together. Hoorah! I'm just building up the rear end of the uh, main shaft. Um, so this part is new um, on account of what I took out. See the corner off that internal member there. It's supposed to be square like that one. I've got a chunk out. And then a bigger chunk out on that one. Yeah. So we bought another one of those. Uh, it still functions the old one, but I'm um, just of the view if a bit's chomp, been chunked out, then it's likely to lose other bits. You fit the next uh, synchro cone in. I've actually retained the synchro cones because there's sod all wrong with them. Uh, there's a very, very slight burr aware. There's certainly nothing to worry about. Um, then you have to make sure that this bushing, fitted with that groove uppermost, is something in the region of two between two and eight thou below the ends of the splines. Well, when I fitted it originally, it wasn't, it was actually snug with them. Um, so the internal dimensions of that, bot, the bosses that that sits on, were obviously at the top end of the spec. So I literally just took it down to the shed and lapped both faces for 10 minutes and I had a diamond home, trying to keep it flat and even all the way around. And that's re-established my uh, end float for uh, the oil film. It's a bit of a swine getting it on the uh, 
spine splines there you go so that sits there and then that one which is original that's the first gear complete with bits of fluff needs a wipe off that fits over the top and then there's a thrust washer there it fits that way on and then i think there's a bearing gets knocked on there so that's the, the first gear on and the thrust washer so basically if you push down on the thrust washer that should still spin and you want enough clearance to allow a decent oil film so that's what we got so i've got to read the next bit of the book so we're down to here and we're on that bit so having got all the parts and putting it all back together uh, Output from the main gearbox it sits in a housing with a bearing and an oil slinger and a bloody great big circlip holding it in. It rotated when I got it in its housing. Just wondering whether it wants a bit of bearing fixing there to hold it. So I started putting the main shaft into place. First problem I came across was the reverse gear is in the way so I had to take that out. Um, then started knocking the shaft in to the bearing race which sits here which is at the back there and the synchro, synchro gear popped out so it went on a cant I got my hand round and lined it all up making sure that the three nodules were these things were set in place anyway I carried on and it wouldn't go home so I knocked it back out and what I've discovered is this uh, synchro hub had uh, decided to go ping, uh, which is annoying. So now I've got to refit the balls into the sockets there and drop the thing together and then start again. Uh, the book's not very great, not very good, because it's just like, just reverse what you did before. And you're like, yeah, right. It's always easier coming apart. So I am um, having a break for a bit before I lose my rag. I'm trying to paint the prop shaft. And the cat's come in. <laughs> it's not going to end well. So I was just putting on the, uh, I don't know what they call that part, it's the bit that basically gives you the output to the front and the rear and it gives you four-wheel drive. <laughs> the selector fork has a pinch bolt and I'll fit the bloody thing 180 degrees round. So I've now got to take it all apart and do it again. Bugger. You little swine. I'm not going to lie. Putting that onto that was a right pain in the arse. Uh, reading through the book, it said fit the pin, make sure it um, goes in and picks up on the hole on the uh, pivot shaft or whatever it is inside there. Did all that, everything going swimmingly, all assembled, and then thought, that's got to go on. And then you realise that that pin has to drop through it. So you pull the pin out and the spring inside fires the bar that way. And of course, there's no access to find out where the pin is. So, oh, do we go? Anyway, I've had enough now. It's uh, what was it half seven? I've been at it eleven hours. Next job's, uh, I think, hanging that on the end of that. I'm pretty much done now on that gearbox transmission. Um, I've got the park brake to fit and a few split pins to replace the ones that are in. Um, and then it wants to mount either side. Um, one of my mates has got the bracket because well, I can't actually remember why now. Anyway, there's another one of those knocking about. Um, and then there's the clutch activation doodah, which is the levers here. But all the bearing assembly recommended just change it. It's very 12 quid or something. Uh, yeah. It's been an education. At least I know how it bloody works now. Um, I've put no springs on the uh, reverse mechanism. And that's really fierce. <laughs> it's like, oh, got it. You're in reverse. 
As soon as you, as you start to come out reverse, it spits it out. So uh, that might need a bit of fettling. But other than that, it seems to be all right. Uh, there's no oil in at the moment. Um, and it's probably going to leak like a bloody sieve because I'm not great at gaskets. But we shall see. Anyway, I've kind of enjoyed it. Some frustrating bits like the design of this so that you you got to withdraw this to then get the nut off. That's a bit arse, really. I suppose I could put a slitting grinder in and just take the top of the thread off. And there's another one underneath, which is even worse. And I seem to be short of a few fixings which weren't in it. So these two, but they have a, the bracket for the overdrive, of which I've got two samples there. And I've got to fabricate something up. That carries another lever which comes up somewhere here. And connects onto this rod which moves in and out uh, which engages and disengages a, a, another reduction gear sorry acceleration gear here yeah. so it uh, gives you a higher speed with the same input revs uh, so that's where those two so i'll replace those and i'll probably just use some metric ones and then that one which wasn't in it uh, so i don't know i'll have to have a route about and see what i can find but yeah rather impressed with myself so that's the arrangement for the overdrive linkage this is off a, a friends loaned it to me as a pattern so it's this curved rod here picking up on a linkage here pivot and up to the gear knob and there's two positions one close into the foot well which is about here and the other one a bit further forward um, I've got a bracket and I've got, these are off a, another one which he says I can have them tweak, but I don't know who's done the welding, but I question whether that'll hold up. Anyway, the um, bracket's cast, this bit's cast iron or steel, and uh, it's gone solid around the pivot nut. So I'm soaking it at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> That bit is what been mocked up. Somebody's mocked it up with that. So that's the bit I'm going to remake. Um, don't know whether I'll try and do a curved bit or not. Depends whether I've got some facility to heat the steel. Anyway, keep me going for a bit. What a pain in the arse this job been. So that gear, which was new, was too long between that shoulder and that shoulder. So I've had to lap that face down on it and take seven thou off the bloody thing. So that now when it fits, it's got the right amount of clearance for the end float. I'm just bloody, it's just pain in the arse. Then I've come to assemble it and there's a pin that sits underneath that bit to locate the bronze bush and stop it rotating. Drop the pin in the hole, put the bush in, put the gear over, pin's too fucking long. <laughs> Only a couple of thou, but you're like, oh for fuck's sake. Yeah, so yeah. Don't do a gearbox, Greg. <laughs> 